Now God asked his people to fast on the annual day of atonement. In other words, he asked them to forsake food and to focus instead on their sins and their need for redemption. And so evidently the Pharisees reasoned, well, if fasting once a year is a good thing, then fasting every week must be a better thing. And what could be better than fasting twice a week? I read that they fasted on what, what would correspond to our Monday and our Thursday every week. So that's the first thing he recounts as far as the positive things he's done. I fast twice a week. And he's recounting what he does to God. I fast twice as if God wouldn't know that. I fast twice in the week. And then I give tithes of all that I possess. Now God calls his people to give him the first fruits of all their increase as we saw last week. The Pharisees, however, went overboard with this concept, as they did with so many others. <laughs> and they would even give tithes of their spices growing in their garden. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You, you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and you've neglected the weightier matters of the law. Justice, mercy, faith. This Pharisee is proud of his diligent attention to God's law. Matthew Henry says, he makes his boast of this, and he dwells with delight upon this, as though all his business in the temple was to tell God how very good he was. <laughs> Why have we fasted and you have not seen? Isaiah 58.3. <laughs> What's the benefit of us fasting, God, if you don't see it? And acknowledge it and reward us for it. As someone noted, he not only mentioned his righteousness, but he pleaded it as if he had made God his debtor. God, you owe me now because, by the way, I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Augustine addresses this man. He says, you have said that you have all. You have asked for nothing. In what respect then have you prayed? <laughs> Lord, I'm better than all these other people. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. Not only did he think highly of himself, he despised others. He assumed or thought he knew that the tax collector that he saw praying further away was unjust. He assumed this tax collector was an extortioner or an adulterer. He couldn't even pray without reproaching his neighbor. Now look at the contrast. Look at verse seven, uh, 13. And the tax collector, standing afar off, didn't presume to stand where the Pharisee stood, standing afar off, would not so much as lift his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He couldn't even look up. He was so overtaken with his sin. He recognized himself to be a sinner by nature and by practice. He knew himself to be guilty before a holy God. The Pharisee spoke as if his fasting and tithing and avoiding grievous sins somehow merited God's favor. But this tax collector, he spoke as one who had no dependence on anything other than the mercy of God. The tax collector earnestly prayed for that mercy. God, be merciful to me. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He came to God empty-handed. He came as a beggar. And what was the result? Verse 14. I tell you, Jesus said, this man, the tax collector, went down to his house justified rather than the other. Why? Because everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. He went down to his house justified. That is, his sins that he was confessing were forgiven. His genuine repentance, his utter humility, his desperation, his simple faith in God's mercy and grace brought the forgiveness that he so earnestly sought. 